What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, it is the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this beautiful Friday end of the work week. It's about, uh, what do we got? 1031 AM on April 8th, 2022. Latest quake on the globe shows some movement out in Hawaii overnight, including uh, quite a few twos and threes. We'll check that out here in just a second. I did want to pop up here a little map. Uh, two years from this date, to be exact, we're going to be seeing the uh, total eclipse come across parts of the North America region, including some highly populated regions through Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area, or uh, not Kansas, but uh, Arkansas region, and upwards through Ohio, Illinois and Ohio area. Uh, looking pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure I'm set up for this one as well. I did catch the August 21st, 2017 eclipse up in the, uh, was up in Madras, Oregon on that year for the event. And man, that thing was spectacular. Let me tell you, uh, it's pretty neat seeing the stars come out uh, during the uh, totality, which was uh, a couple minutes long. It was pretty neat. So uh, I'm definitely going to be out there for the April 8th, 2024 uh, eclipse there in Texas. Uh, probably shoot for somewhere down. Uh, it's gonna it looks like it's almost gonna go directly over Dallas area but uh, we'll have to check on that as things get closer but figure it I'd bring that up here if you guys want to make plans I know it's two years out but I, I guarantee you a lot of motel rooms and whatnot are already booked uh, for that date I can't wait though uh, moving on into the earthquake department here we'll go ahead and check out the latest activity from the USGS map here showing movement over the last 24 hours uh, there's the uh, activity in Hawaii or on Hawaii I should say let's go ahead and zoom in here where they did see a 3.7 come in late last night in the area of the southeast region of the Big Island uh, and some twos in there as well most of the activity has been confined to this area down here to the southeast uh, latest quake around volcano Hawaii a 2.1 at uh, 3.1 kilometers all other areas of the Big Island Mauna Loa Mauna Kea up to the west and north all look pretty quiet in terms of seismic activity backing out over here to the west coast along the north american continent here uh, still seeing some activity along the san andreas fault zone uh, including a earthquake here within the last hour 2.2 just right smack dab on that uh, fault plate boundary here 2.7 kilometers uh, below the surface for the depth of that earthquake also seeing a little bit of swarming in this region of the San Andreas Fault. Of course, it is pretty close to the uh, the creeping section, the slipping section, if you will. Uh, this is well south of the Bay Area. We have seen a little bit of swarming out here uh, last week and the week before, so that looks like that's continuing today. Uh, Southern California, not a whole lot going on as far as the last hour of earthquake activity. San Jacinto Fault Zone here up against these uh, San Jacinto Mountains. Still seeing some activity in the microquake range and a little bit of activity up south up north but south of victorville on the san bernardino mountains uh, that's going to be the north american side of the plate boundary <clears throat> no major swarms to report uh, a little query blast here <clears throat> outside of corona 1.4 uh, it's pretty deep for a uh, query blast 2.1 kilometers Ridge, uh, Ridgecrest region, still seeing some activity up here. Uh, of course, this will continue, could continue for years from the 2019 earthquakes back here, July 4th and July 5th of that year. Also some movement here outside of the uh, White Wolf Fault Zone, <clears throat> just to the east here, it looks like, very end of it. Now this system sits just south of Bakersfield, north of Tehachapi. I do want to look at the uh, Tex on the White Wolf Fault Zone. The Caltech website shows a uh, pretty cool um, layout here of all the different faults in Southern California. It is a left lateral reverse type fault. <clears throat> See if I can keep my voice. Still got whatever's going on. It's, I can't kick it. I think I need to take a spoonful of honey or something. Maybe that'll help. The length of this fault system, about 60 kilometers and uh, most recent surface rupture was back in uh looks like uh, july 21st 1952 when the m7.5 struck in that area 
Slip rate is actually a pretty high in this region, 3.0 and 8.5 mm per year. It says possibly much less. Uh, interval between major ruptures is unknown at this time. Probable magnitudes, obviously, up to at least a 7.5. Uh, the White Wolf Fault dips to the southeast. So, <clears throat> 1952, with the accumulated stress rate there, uh, up to 8.5 mm per year. Kind of puts us at, uh, you know, definitely possibility of seeing some further... Uh, earthquake activity in this region. Right now, these are just uh, very small quakes. It was a 3.3 on that specific fault area, just at the eastern edge of it, and a couple smaller microquakes, but uh, yeah, still there's a you know possibility of seeing something bigger on that one. Any of these fault systems here. Uh, this is just a, California is a super complex web of faults and, uh, and um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. There's a lot of fault systems down there. All right, moving up north into the Long Valley Super Volcano. Some activity still continuing today into this region, south of Mammoth Lakes. Quite a few microquakes now here around the Candelaria Hills here across the highway. We got uh, some swarming kicking up still once again from the earthquake activity. Oh, that six-pointer struck back in uh, 2019, I believe, in that area of Tonopah. Northern California, not a whole lot going on. Nothing to report here along the Cascadia. We had one earthquake way off the coast here in the Blanco Fracture Zone. That was last night. Since then, I'm not seeing any further activity along the Cascadia. One little earthquake, one lonesome earthquake over here, 2.2 near Cedarville uh, in California, 4.4 kilometers below surface into the mountains here. Looks like the Warner Mountain Range, Sol or Surprise Valley area. There's some fault systems up here too. Got looks like the Davis Creek Fault Zone and uh, a couple other fault systems in that uh, area. Oregon, Washington there. Looks like it's kind of going quiet once again. Um, only a 1.3 showing up in the Washington region. I want to check out the volcanic activity here. We'll go ahead and check out. By the way, that's the trimmer activity from last night. Still continuing. Uh, into southern Oregon and also up uh, around the Vancouver Island ranges with 299 uh, epicenters of tremor. Uh, volcanic activity, we're going to check out Mount Rainier real quick, see what we got. Nothing showing up here on the map as far as anything being reported. Uh, we'll go ahead and zoom into the seismograph here. It looks like St. Andrew's Rock. Not for sure if this one's going to let me see the uh, this seismograph. I think this is the one I was having issues with, but we'll see see what we got yeah that's kind of just blown out of proportion there isn't it <clears throat> it doesn't look like any type of uh, seismic activity uh, wind speeds up there could be an issue way up on that area um, I'm looking at the map right now and we do see some pretty gusty winds up there around uh, Mount Rainier looks like wow maybe 40 50 mile per hour wind gusts at the moment uh, so that could be what we're seeing here. I know we got a major wind event coming here in California. And even where I live, beginning late tonight and lasting for a couple days. Um, so that's, let me let me go back and double check uh, the previous day. So that's today. And uh, yeah, it shows a 2.6 in Coos Bay, or near Coos Bay. Kind of odd because, like literally... Where is that 2.6 in Coos Bay, right? Let's bring down the all magnitudes here. If that's from just a few hours ago, well, actually, it's from, uh, let's see what the timestamp is here on this. Uh, yeah, it was definitely within the 24 hour period. So we had a 2.6 near Coos Bay, but uh, USGS not showing anything here around Coos Bay area. Kind of odd see what happens when I click on it here is a 2.6 April 7th that was yesterday 1745 UTC time so within that uh, just about within that 24 hour period but I, I didn't even see that pop up last night on any of the maps so there's definitely an earthquake being reported uh, around the Coos Bay area looks like the depth 39.29 that's a very deep subduction zone earthquake along the Cascadia Looks like it was off the coast there. 
165 miles west northwest from Coos Bay. Okay, kind of interesting. Alrighty, but uh, as far as local seismic activity here at this volcano, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards some type of wind event or interference of some sort. Doesn't look to be volcanic. Volcanic's not going to be straight lines like that. Uh, earthquake activity is not going to be continuous straight lines like that either. So not for sure. Looks like some glitches going on. I know they are doing uh, um, some some I, I guess you could call repairs or enhancements on their in the back end of their systems uh, to hopefully improve data to the public out here. Mount St. Helens. We'll go ahead and check out this volcanic activity or see if there is volcanic activity up here. Uh, around the dome and looking up here in Washington it's windy uh, definitely windy up there around Mount St. Helens as well but these guys are not showing the wind event it may be adjusted accordingly um, different seismograph stations are affected in certain ways by wind uh, like that one that we just seen there at Mount Rainier and sometimes we get uh, stations that are not so this one is not but there is seismic activity at Mount St. Helens and you can see that earthquake right there, pretty well defined, and one within the last couple minutes here. A couple of them, a pretty good handful of uh, small, very small earthquakes there at Mount St. Helens. Checking out the previous day. Uh, these guys are also showing the 2.6, which is not visible here on the seismograph. So all this activity, very localized, uh, but there is some earthquake activity popping up there at Mount uh, St. Helens. So uh, checking out the Let's see here. Let's check out Mount Adams. We haven't checked this out in a while. Notice they don't have any seismograph stations uh, around this area, except for one way over here. Windy in this area as well. Looking on the map, good 40 mile per hour gusts around this area of Stagman Ridge. And uh, see these things, these guys having the uh, kind of like that error that we were seeing on. Um, uh, Mount Rainier, I think a few days ago. Some these are not earthquakes. These do not look like earthquakes. Looks like either it's hard to say exactly what it is. Not volcanic. I don't believe these lines that are just equally the same uh, are earthquakes at all. And up here as well, earthquakes have a different signature than that. This here is some type of interference or uh, adjustment on the mon on the uh, seismograph monitor. So actually it looks pretty clear throughout that uh, area of the state. I do want to check out here in the Newberry Volcano area because we have been having a little swarm of activity in that region over the past uh, couple weeks or so. We'll see what they're reporting today. Newberry, Oregon, North Rim Station. And uh, yeah, there's that looks like some earthquake activity popping up here within the last couple hours. But it's, it's different than the, the ones that we just seen at the Mount Baker um, seismograph. So these are definitely earthquake signatures. Nothing big, just a little handful of them. Previous day, we'll check out that. And uh, not a whole lot going on throughout the previous day period. A couple small ones mixed in down here as well. But still kind of watching that pretty closely. Uh, okay, all right, what else we got here, folks? Getting back to the earthquake activity around the states. Uh, of course, movement happening up here along the coast. Just not showing up here on the USGS map, but, but on the PNSN network. So, kind of odd. Let's see here. I'm going to go over here to their recent earthquake map and see what they got. There's that 3.7. That was on the Blanco Fracture Zone. But these guys are still not showing the, uh, is this the Coos Bay earthquake? No, that's from uh, last month. I'm just not seeing where that Coos Bay earthquake is. They reported it on the live seismographs, the recorded ones, but they're not showing it up here on the, um, on the map. Movement throughout Idaho, Washington. A little bit in Yellowstone as well. Let's go ahead and check out the latest overview. Yellowstone National Park. Looks like the swarm has uh, died off a little bit. 4-8, making sure we're looking at the right uh, 
UTC time. Kind of looks, yeah, 1700, almost 1800. Yep. A little earthquake activity here early this morning and overnight. A couple well defined earthquakes, nothing major. Just a little sporadic activity around Mary Lake, it looks like. The swarm that we did see down south has come to a halt, as well as the one up here in the northwestern portion of the park. Texas, Oklahoma, a little bit of activity down there in the oil and gas fields, also around the New Madrid zone, 1.5 at 10.8 kilometers. Eastern part of the country, pretty quiet. No major quakes to report. Earthquakes Canada, we'll go ahead and uh, <clears throat> check these guys out here real quick. It's supposed to be another 90 degrees today, and then our north winds kick in. It's supposed to have like 50 mile per hour winds here. So that's going to be uh, fun, but it's going to be dry. We've got the dry north wind coming in once again. Uh, nothing really to report. There was some activity last night or uh, yesterday and a couple days before along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, the northern end. But today, most recent quake over here outside of Quebec, it looks like uh, 0.7, 5.8 kilometers. Nothing really to even write home to grandma about at all. Puerto Rico, Santiago area, looks like uh, uh, Santo Domingo, I mean, some movement out here, uh, southwestern edge of Puerto Rico, nothing major going on, I'm not seeing any migration of swarms, anything around the Puerto Rico Trench at the moment. Uh, down here in the Prucelli Trench, we are seeing a pair of fours, quite a few fours out there. Overnight, most of this was uh, definitely overnight. Haven't seen any renewed movement in that area since then. Uh, South Pacific Ocean is showing a 5.0 in the, uh, the Pacific rise out here. And a little bit of activity throughout the western portion of the Pacific Ring of Fire and areas around Papua New Guinea with a 5.1 a few hours ago. So. Kind of watching it, folks. Uh, lighten up more on the eastern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire than it is on the western side over here. So, got to watch that pretty closely. There's some movement out there around the San Andreas Fault Zone. Up into Alaska, we're seeing some activity as well. Uh, quite a few within the last hour and some notable uh, quakes up here to the north. A lot of times we see some deeper movement up here. Here's a little cluster of quakes. Uh, looks like about six earthquakes up here in Alaska. Uh, with a couple twos and some threes in there in the mix as well. Some further movement up north with a pair of threes. Some deeper activity up here in the northern part of Alaska. All right, folks. Uh, let's see. I don't think we got anything else. The solar weather, we will check it. I know there's not a whole lot going on um, at all. KP index is way down there. They are forecasting maybe... Some elevated conditions here over the next couple nights. I highly doubt it. Uh, solar flare activity is diminishing every single day uh, with only a 30% chance of a sea flare, but uh, I don't even know if we'll ever reach that level with these current sunspot, um, current sunspots that are on the sun here, just not looking super dynamic. But uh, they're there, but they're not there in terms of any uh, major flaring. In fact, it looks pretty, uh, pretty clear see what develops so in the coming weeks and days and next couple of years as we head towards that uh, interesting solar maximum event all right guys have a good day peace out we'll chat you guys tonight friday night uh, we'll be back here with missy mimi's with the uh earthquake show tonight question and answer show so make sure you check it out right around probably 7 or 7 30 this evening california time of course have a good day Peace out, guys. Not for sure what's going on with the uh, Kippa Hawaii station. Looks like they're doing some adjustments on it. I've uh, been just kind of watching it, seeing if they're going to figure it out. But uh, ignore the unusual uh, activity occurring there on the seismograph. Uh, if that doesn't get fixed, I will uh, switch up to a different one there on Hawaii. Have a good day, folks. Chat you tonight. Peace out.